I'm Gabe. And I'm Johnny. Today we'll do something similar to what we did in the Rito episode, in which we covered pretty much everything about the race and culture. But this time around, we'll talk about the Gerudo people, and to try to make matters easier to understand with the current timeline, we'll follow the game's launch order. So let's get started. The Gerudo were first introduced to us in Ocarina of Time as the Amazon warrior tribe of the desert, highly trained red-headed women with amber eyes. Here it is said that a single male is born every 100 years. This being a universe where magic is common on day-to-day -day lives, this could be quite literal, but if not magical, it could be just a genetic trace that makes it so extremely rare for a male Gerudo to be born that it usually takes around 100 years for one to show up. Being that rare, the male Gerudo is given special status and made king of their tribe. The one in charge in this era is Ganondorf, who, under the guise of loyalty to the King of Hyrule, managed to get to the wishing granting relic, the Triforce, and took over the kingdom for seven years before being defeated by the Hero of Time. During this time, they are known as the Gerudo Thieves, even before Ganondorf's betrayal on Hyrule indicating that they already didn't have a nice relationship with other races. Even so, Naburu, the second in command of the Gerudo, is said to protect the weak and don't kill people, leading her to enter the Spirit Temple, a holy place for the Gerudo, which Ganondorf and his minions were using as hideout, to steal their treasures and foil their plans. Koumi and Kotake, Ganondorf's adoptive mothers, are the Gerudo witches known as Twin Rover, and, when discovering Naburu's presence there, kidnapped and brainwashed her into a mindless, ironclad warrior to protect the same place she set out to steal from. Those are the Iron Knuckles, who, in this game at least, seems to be all Gerudo who turn on Ganondorf, now brainwashed. Ganondorf is shown to possess great magical powers, even before acquiring the Triforce, probably taught by Twin Rova. The Gerudo didn't take kindly to trespassers into their territory imprisoning a group of carpenters who wish to join them and the Hero of Time if he gets caught wandering around. But after freeing the prisoners, they do recognize Link's strength and grant him membership into their group and free pass into their fortress, training grounds and spirit temple, though most of them are likely still unaware of his intentions to dethrone Ganondorf. In the spirit temple in the Desert Colossus, the large statues of the Goddess of Sand and Serpents are present, which led many to believe that their symbol could be the head of a serpent, like a Naja. In the first version of the game, their symbol was a moon and a star, but due to its similarity with the symbol of the slam, it was changed in every new game it appeared and every new version of Ocarina of Time since then, excluding it from Zelda lore, as Nintendo tries to avoid real-life religious material inside their games. In Majora's Mask, the Gerudo make a return in the parallel land of Termina as the female pirates of the Great Bay. Though not much is expanded on their culture like in Ocarina of Time, other than they stole Zora eggs to try to enter the Great Bay Temple to look for treasures. The witches Koume and Kotake also come back but not as villains, and, while still witches with magical powers, are just shop owners who help and are helped by Link along the way. Maybe not even necessarily related to the Gerudo pirates. In the Oracle games, Twin Rova comes back once again as their mastermind behind the main enemies of both games, plotting to revive Ganon. They do call themselves Gerudo Witches, although nothing more about the Gerudo culture is shown here. Since it seems unlikely they could have survived the events of Ocarina of Time, those could be reincarnations or new characters with the same name, appearance and abilities as the previous ones, just like many other characters in the Zelda franchise. In The Wind Waker, the only Gerudo shown is Ganondorf, the same one from Ocarina of Time. But this time, his base of operations is the Forsaken Fortress, where Tetra says it used to be the hideout of a no-good group of pirates, her rivals, and by its location on the map could be the Gerudo Fortress from Ocarina of Time. The Gerudo Thief turned pirates is also a nod to their role in Majora's Mask, but after the return of Ganondorf, they didn't want to join him and left or were forced to leave their hideout. In Four Swords Adventure, we then get some update on the situation of the Gerudo. Here, the tradition has changed. The male Gerudo, stillborn every hundred years, is not crowned king. Now they have a matriarch who takes the position of leader, while he is the guardian of the tribe. They live nomadic lives, 
are known as trustworthy and pure of heart and are quite welcoming of outsiders in their camp. Also, the desert is now called Desert of Doubt, which I think may indicate they are searching for their ancestral home. By now, people have long forgotten about the events of Ocarina of Time and the evil king Ganon, so much that Ganondorf is a recognizable Gerudo name bearing no bad reputation. That is, until the sole male Gerudo with that name acquires Ganon's trident and with it his powers and evil intentions and tries to conquer the land. He broke his people's law to get the trident, as he invaded a pyramid in the desert considered sacred by the Gerudo. This Ganondorf is probably a reincarnation of the previous one, but could be a completely new person who grew hungry for power over time, as you never see him in his human form in this game, only as Demon King Ganon, after already acquiring the power of the previous Ganon. In Twilight Princess, we get the same Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time yet again. But the Gerudo Fortress and the Spirit Temple, now converted into the Arbiter's Ground, are overrun by monsters. The Desert Colossus was taken over in the past following Ganondorf's apprehension by the Hylians, and then converted into a prison. A common thought is that some Gerudo were imprisoned and later executed here, like they tried with Ganondorf, while others fled, since they were able to return in Four Swords Adventure. But a green theory is that many are still around as mindless guardians of this now unholy temple. The mummified enemies present in many titles are a bit different here. Being quite taller than Link and wielding a large sword, there are those who think they may be mummified knights. But being exclusive to the desert brings the possibility they could be executed Gerudo. In Scarlet Surge, the game that precedes every other in the franchise, the only group of humans we see are the Highlands from Skyloft and Impa, a Shika on the surface. It is strongly believed that the Skyloftian, Groose, with his red hair, yellow eyes and larger build, is an ancestor of the Gerudo. During that time, to the east, is located the Lanaro Desert, home of the Gerudo Dragonfly. That is the only instance of this word being used in this game, and marks the first time the word has shown up in chronological order. Look up that description. These stunning insects have compound eyes more beautiful than rupees, and wings as transparent as glass. Has anybody ever told you your eyes are more beautiful than a dollar bill? That's a nice line. This brings the possibility that the Gerudo symbol actually represents the head of this insect. Later in the timeline, when the Saint Sea of the Lanaro province was the only remaining area of desert, the word Lanaro started being used as a name for the greener regions, while Gerudo was adopted for the desert. If we take into consideration that the Gerudo evolved from Hylians, that would mean they shared the same culture at first. This includes the worship of the goddess Hylia, so the mysterious goddess of sand from the Desert Colossus could be a variation of Hylia's legend. In Ocarina of Time's era, the Hylians have moved their main deity from Hylia to the three golden goddesses, like during most of the series, as Hylia herself had not been invented or presented to the players before Skyward Sword. But now that could mean that it was the Gerudo who kept the memory of their original deity alive, which was later reintroduced into Hylian culture. The game's main antagonist, the Demon King Demise, curses the ones possessing the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero to forever face another like him in a never-ending cycle. This curse may have pushed those seeking power over the series into being even more aggressive than they otherwise would, or may have literally been reincarnated as the Ganondorf Sin and possibly even other villains in the franchise. By the time of Breath of the Wild, the latest entry so far and last chronologically, their culture has dramatically changed from before. We know of at least three Gerudo leaders, Lady Urbosa, Lady Riju, and Riju's late mother, in the span of 100 years with apparently no male rulers, though it is quite possible that one could have been born during that time frame. But they dropped their customs regarding Gerudo male after the two last fiascos. Better safe than sorry, now absolutely no man is allowed inside the walls of Gerudo town. No exceptions like in Ocarina of Time. Not even for the hero, after saving their homeland from a rampaging robot, leading a few men to disguise themselves as women in order to get access into town. But this era is at least 10,000 years after any other game and this law is already old by then and is treated more like an outdated tradition by most of the citizens, including their chief, often looking the other way when meeting such intruders. At this time, they seem to have moved from the worship of the goddess of sand 
and no statue of hers is present anywhere, with the old desert colossus apparently destroyed, now they honor the seven heroines, with a forgotten 80th one, but they deserve a video on their own, explaining all the details about who they were. The Gerudo people know of the ancient legend that Ganon once took the form of a Gerudo, and the divine beast used by Urboza, Vanna Boris, was named after Naburu. Since both Lady Riju and her mother were Gerudo chiefs, and Riju often mentions Urbosa as an ancestor, we could speculate that their rule works more like a family monarchy now, and not seeing hints of a descendant of Urbosa in their memories from 100 years ago, Riju could be something like her grand or great grandniece. The Gerudo seem to have a long enduring peace with the other races across Hyrule, with Urbosa having been the best friend of Hyrule's queen, and after her passing, became a close friend and supportive motherly figure to her daughter, Princess Zelda. Here, they now have predominantly green eyes, and the Gerudo are shown to be much taller than Hylians since childhood, which was only really clear on Ganondorf before, as every child you find in the game is the same height and looks about the same age, same goes for the Gerudo, and even though they are taller, they have the same type of childish dialogues as the Hylians ones, and are clearly younger than Lady Region, who is 12 and is already almost as tall as Link who is around 17, or 117. When observing their daily lives in the Gerudo town, you realize how complex their regular life cycle often is. They are raised in Gerudo town, when reaching adulthood, they venture the world in search for a partner, and some will return to Gerudo town to trade, like some shopkeepers in the market, or live their lives far from their homeland, which seems to be the case with Ronson in the newly founded Terry town, to the opposite side from the desert. Since we don't see Gerudo kids in other locations, they are probably sent back to Gerudo town to be raised in their own culture, either by a mother who returned as well, or by their grandmothers, aunts, or older sisters. In one instance, an old Gerudo trader tells Link how she has to look after her grandchildren while her daughter works non-stop. A nice detail that could have been added to the game and makes sense in this context would be a small settlement where some Gerudo could live with their whole family close to Gerudo town, maybe as a more populated version of the Karakara Bazaar, the small but quite empty market outside of Gerudo town, where everybody is allowed to enter. But how would they deal with male Gerudo if one was born? I think they would at least allow him to be raised inside the town, with no more privileges like in past eras, and likely forced to seek life away when reaching adulthood or his mother could choose to raise the kids outside, as a few Gerudo are already living across Hyrule, both to avoid complications and mistrust from other Gerudo, and to prevent the probable hardships her son would face in Gerudo town. A common theory is that, this birth being of magical nature, no male will be born while there's already one around, with the current dehydrated Ganondorf is still half alive, preventing another one from being born. But it is mentioned that it is rare for a male to be born in Gerudo, so it doesn't seem to be something that only happened in ages past. Then there should be one male Gerudo around somewhere. Now this is pure conjecture, but Vilia, the woman who gives Link the Gerudo set, not going into much details, is heavily implied to be a man and apparently the only one to be able to get into Gerudo town unnoticed besides Link. She didn't have to be disguised as a Gerudo, only as a female, as women from other races can come and go as they please, even Goron, who now I strongly believe are neither male nor female. That may be her normal skin tone, she could have dyed her hair and even eyebrows, but when you look at her face you can see a greyish beard, but it's not a bushy beard, for me it's look more like a cartoonesque short shave, or that 5 o'clock shadow. How can people actually grow enough beard by 5 in the afternoon? which was drawn in this color to fit with the art style, meaning she is in fact red-haired. She could actually have been a Gerudo man, born and raised away from his people, and found this way to approach them discreetly. Everybody refers to her as a Hylian girl, who comes and goes from Gerudo town, even when looking like a Gerudo, probably because she still talks like a Hylian. Every other man in the game that has shown interest in entering Gerudo town has a reason. Some want to sell their market, some want to woo the ladies, and Link has to stop a divine beast. But Vilia doesn't seem to have any other goods to sell other than the same Gerudo female clothes that are sold at the town's plaza for any woman who goes there. And she doesn't go around offering this way in for the men outside, 
so she's not really profiting from this business. She's mostly just hanging around because she likes the place and maybe getting to know her people. Another unique character around her town is Ashai, the Gerudo relationship slash cooking teacher, could be albino. Yes, in Breath of the Wild, they finally added some skin variation to NPCs, not only for the Gerudo, but every race in Hyrule. So there are other Gerudo with lighter skin tones, but every single one of them still has the vibrant red hair, when Ashai is the only one with pink, or rather the colored red, hair and eyebrows. Sometimes I see people mentioning some characters may be half Gerudo. I understand if it's like a whole new race that could have evolved from them over time, but not when it's a single person in one of the games, as practically every Gerudo is half Gerudo since they need outside men, usually Hylians to have children. Even though every Gerudo is likely half Hylian from their fathers, they are always born Gerudo, with little to none Hylian traits being passed down, be it again by fictional genetics or magic. Either that or it's confirmed the Gerudo are lizard people who have plotted to take control over the government. It all makes sense now. But one interesting piece of anatomy got my attention. The ears. There seems to have been some retconning about this trait. In Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64, they had round ears, including Ganondorf. But after 7 years, his ears were more pointy. Then, in The Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, he also had slightly pointed ears. In Four Stars Adventure, we can't really tell how they look from the sprites, but when Ocarina of Time was remade for the 3DS, Ganondorf kept his rounded ears in the future, and now in Breath of the Wild and its sequel, every Gerudo has pointed ears, except Ganondorf, who kept the rounded Ocarina of Time ears. Meaning that after unknown millennia of Gerudo Hylian teens mixing, their ears became pointy, which, in a more metaphorical way, could point to them now being actually considered a part of Haru. As for what the word Gerudo actually means, I have a few ideas. In Adventure of Link, there were the Geldarms, and in A Link to the Past, there were the enemies called Geldmen. In Japanese though, it was Gerudo Amu and Gerudo Men, respectively, and both found in desert areas, using the exact same word to later describe the tribe. Like the prefix stall is used for skeletal beings in Zelda universe, or the suffix blin used for goblin-like creatures, so the prefix geru or gerudo may have something to do with deserts. One option that I've seen is that it was a word for desert, so geldman, gerudo tribe and gerudo dragonfly could mean desert man, desert tribe and desert dragonfly, and the gerudo desert would literally mean desert desert, which is just weird and wrong but not that uncommon when borrowing a foreigner word into your language. An option I prefer that sounds likely less weird is that Gerudo means sand, so the examples would become Sandman, Sand Tribe, Sand Dragonfly and finally Sand or Sandy Desert, which is the most common type of desert, but it's not technically wrong. And that's about it for now, at least until the next game comes around. If you think we left any important information out, comment below and tell us what you thought about this video as well. And don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more content like this. You can check our last theory of Zelda here, about the origins of the Twily, spoiler, it might have to do with the Gerudo too, or you can watch our last game review about the indie game Hyper Light Drifter. See you. Bye.